Hi, guys. I'm back again. And well, yeah. So I've been gone for a hot minute and I apologize, but it's been one roller coaster and I'm so happy to share you guys what I've been doing for the past couple of days. So today we'll be doing a vintage painting slash drawing and they're known to be a representation of objects that are symbolic. And these objects are designed or arranged to remind the viewers of their morality and the worth of their silverly goods and pleasures. And well, I made one, so roll the intro. Welcome back to Arius Arts, where we explore the creative arts of the world however we see fit. If you are new here, welcome to the community. We hope that you're feeling good, staying safe, and being yourself. Guys, today is a very monumental day. Today we have two shoutouts. And yeah, today's shoutout goes to Amazing Natures and Octave. Thank you so, so much for your subscription and your comments, albeit it has been a while, but either way, it happens. If you want a chance to get a shout out in my next video, hit that subscribe button and leave a comment down below at the end of every week and I will pick a lucky subscriber. Pro tip, you can increase your chances by leaving one or more comments on any one of my videos. Octave and Amazing Natures, you know very well that you use this to your advantage. So congratulations to you guys. And so I wish you all a good luck in my next video. Now, let's go. Okay, so I guess I could start with a quick history lesson on what a Venetus painting is and where it came from. So Venetus is the Latin word for vanity and was used to name the now upcoming genre of art in the mid 1500s. Funny enough, it took until the early 1600s for it to really be popular and from then on, it's been there-ish. Like I said, it's a genre of still life painting slash drawing representing the fact that no matter how much you love something, you will die and leave it behind. But dark statements aside, <clears throat> but dark statements aside, let's keep going. So the most common arrangements or styles or types of Venetian paintings we see now is from the Netherlands in the early 17th century. Most of them having skulls, cloth, dying candles, and expensive jewels to really drive home that point of, well, you love it, but you're gonna leave it. Another thing is that they're extremely detailed and were really valued based on how accurate and representative they could be. I mean, right now, one of the 18th century paintings goes for about more than 11,000 Canadian dollars. So yeah, they were and still are a big deal. Phew. All right, now that the lesson is over, let's get drawing. So for our final project, we were tasked to create a Venetius painting of our own. And now despite we, us being given our own mini lesson within the lecture class, I decided to go on my own and find out a bit more to help me determine what I wanted in mind specifically. After much deliberation, I finally chose my items and what each would represent in particular. So my first item was a glass of water half full or half empty for those who, you know, whichever you view it, to represent life. Two apples, one green, one red for medicine and intervention two notepads and my cookbook for knowledge, a sketch pad for skill, a blanket for comfort, and finally a serviette for etiquette. I set those up and did a mini photo shoot and decided to keep the lighting warm as possible. For media slash materials, I chose not to draw this and then paint it. For some reason, the painting just didn't sit well with me. And so I decided I'll use a combination of drawing pencils ranging from 2H to 9B, charcoal from charcoal sticks to pastels to pencils and charcoal dust. And for blending, I flat soft bristle brush, which is my bristle brush. Jeez. Bristle brushes. You know you can't be prosecuted for that! Which is my personal preference. 
So for my setup, it was a bit tricky, but I finally selected the corner of my room next to a window. I wanted a place that had good heating because it is a cold in Canada right now. Like, yo, I don't even know how y'all do this. I am not built for the cold, man. I grew up in the slut. But anyway, I wanted a good place with good heating, so I didn't freeze since it was dead winter at this point. So, y'all, if you live in Ontario, Quebec, or anywhere where it's minus 20 right now, or minus 20 then, I salute you. Now for the fun part. For this piece, I utilized both the grid method and measuring of skill to get the positioning, highlights, and shadows in the right place. This is something that I really wish that I did in my last project, you know, the one that was drawing the five point perspective. If you have not seen that, I will put a link in the description and you can go check it out once you're done here. But we live and we learn and well, yeah. So to tackle adding media or while adding the various materials that I decided to use to this particular drawing, I decided I'd go from the bottom up basically in shades. So from the darkest to the lightest. And as you can see, I focus on getting all the dark deep shadows done, then slowly work my way up to highlighting that eventually light spots. I particularly love this method because it allows me to really create huge trans contrast between the two. And on top of that, it made the piece look hyper realistic. I mean, it was a new body. I, I loved how this turned out, but yeah. Another thing I really wish I did, and like I said, we live and we learn, but I feel like the five point perspective really taught me a lot in terms of the things that I didn't do and what I did do wrong. I'm gonna be a lot more honest here and there were a few things that I was new to in this piece. One was drawing in such a huge scale. I have never drawn a piece this big and I had it myself in the back every single day as I kept trudging through this work. Two, I've never drawn a glass in my life. My first all reason I I have never put myself in the position where I'm drawing a glass. Like it's never happened. So it was it was fun to do, but if you've seen me through my journey as an artist, I've never done glasses, like I mentioned, and I've never also drawn water. Well, apart from the five point perspective, but not water in this form where it's just literally reflecting light. But I have to admit that the turnout was a interesting and it was a challenge that i really i was i was there for but you know it was what Wrapping up this drawing, I finally got to understand how in some areas more is better and in others less is better. I also learned that a few major focal points is better than having extreme detail every single place. I feel like there's also that aspect that it's something that I had to learn the hard way because I, when I, when I want to make something, I want to make sure that it's all unique, it's all 
um, how do you put it? It's all equal, but this particular course taught me that you don't have to make everything perfect. You just need your subject to be perfect and then everything needs to accompany that, accompany that perfect aspect of your drawing. So as I was approaching the end of the finish line, I did realize that many of my shadows were blending into each other, which was very unfortunate. So to fix it, I decided to implement another method that I learned, which was called the layering of media. This required me to make sure that I finished all the essential spots of shading, erased all of the marks that I did not want in the final piece, all the pencil marks, all the charcoal marks that were in the wrong place, and then I had to put a good layer of fixative on top of that so that everything could stay still and then after everything dried 20 minutes later, I would have to go back with all the media on top. So basically this was just me putting product on top of product. You know, like the way you do makeup, putting your foundation on, then your concealer, then your, you know. So I basically did that and I ended up having very, very rich, rich dark shades, which I'm happy about. I've never seen charcoal get that dark and I was very happy about it. So I've learned that. And lucky for me, I only had to do this once until I spray it for the final time. And of course, let it dry and left it there to never see it until it finished drying. Phew! So, we are done. But anyway, um, like I mentioned before, out of all the pieces that I've done, this is the one I'm most proud of. Self. I think the sheer size and the amount of details that I managed to pack into it just taught me how bigger is better and a little goes a long way. It only took me six days to do this, which was also something that really, really impressed me. And it's not because I was rushing to try and finish it, but it was more of like, wow, what you can achieve in the six days. And honestly, I perfected a lot of techniques and have learned to really put my theory to practice. I know I do it a lot, but um, this was a big, a big step forward. and. I myself a nice pat on the back, you know, enjoying it. But with that, I have a question for you. What would you have put in your vintage painting or drawing? Comment down below. I really want to know what you love so much that you know very well you're just gonna leave it the fuck by. <laughs> anyway, um, otherwise, do check out my other videos or click the link to your right side of your screen. YouTube is telling you something either way. I will see you in the next one. Peace.